All right, so I've got Miss Amber Nova here with me on the show. She is an amazing and accomplished wrestler and mechanic here in the United States. So Amber, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much for that introduction. Yes, I loved it. Well, good. So I'm gonna start you off by asking what I ask everyone on my show and that's when did you fall in love with wrestling? Oh, um, probably about the same time you did as a child, um, young kid watching wrestling with dad at home and then going to live events. And, um, you know, the older I got, you know, I pursued a different career path. It was a EMT. I was a, a EMT in South Carolina doing medical transport. And then I saw these incredible, beautiful, amazing women you'd probably know of, uh, Sasha, Bailey, Charlotte, Carmella coming up in the WWE Performance Center in Orlando um, about six, seven years ago. And I was like, wow, you know, these women are my age. They're not that size of China. Maybe I could do this. And it was just incredible what they were doing. Um, you know, I know that everyone's talking about the women's evolution, but I think, honestly, the women's evolution has been going on even longer. It's just now it's really main eventing. And um, yeah, so that's really what made me take that uh, big step. Okay, so you were an ENT first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does how do you balance you know training for wrestling while also being an EMT, you know, and also being a mechanic as well? So um, I didn't work um, as a mechanic, but I do drive a '73 Chevy Nova, all American muscle car. Dad is a mechanic, and Dad taught me basic car maintenance, so I changed my own oil, and I'm a little mechanic myself, but more like home maintenance. Um, you know, if someone's car breaks down, I have helped them fix it before, but I don't work as a mechanic. I did work as an EMT back home in South Carolina, but when I moved to Orlando, I left my career behind as well as all my friends and family and moved here alone because I couldn't work 24, 36-hour you know, shifts on an ambulance and wrestle and train and travel and go to the gym and maintain. Plus EMTs don't make that much money. So instead I got a bartending certification and I bartended for a while before modeling and wrestling picked up. Wow. That's a pretty cool journey, <laughs> like to be able to do that. And I feel like personally EMT should make more with what they do. Like, oh, yes. you guys are essentially heroes and, you know, you don't really think about it, but definitely it's like last year, um, definitely it sort of, you know, made you sort of realize, you know, a lot of what EMTs and doctors and nurses really are, they're like superheroes, you know, without the powers, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but they do have powers and they deserve to be paid a whole lot more. So I'm 100%. I, really, I, I agree really with you. Yeah, I really respect the fact that that was your profession. And even though you had to sort of let it go to be a wrestler of some sort, you still found a way to support yourself. What exactly is bartending like, though? Because you did mention that. <laughs> um bartending is a lot of fun um you know you meet some interesting people long nights very very exhausting on your feet um tiring uh it was good though it was fun and, and honestly bartending you know uh, very personal conversation I think it even helped in wrestling um just just being personable and um just having a you know being able to always draw the conversation and so uh, I had a good time bartending. I actually bartended in Disney Springs, a whiskey bar, some wine bars, a couple places around Orlando, some nightclubs. And um, I guess I'm a jack of all, a Jill of all trades. <laughs> cool. So during your training, I've, you know, with the information that you've shared with me, you know, before our time together here, you mentioned that you've been trained um, by some of the greats in the business, like Hector Guerrero, um, Lince Dorado um, from WWE, who's currently a part of the Lucha House Party now, and even Matt Seidel. So what are some of the greatest lessons that you've learned from them, you know, in your training journey? And what are some other things that you've learned as well? I've learned so much of them. Um, so when I first moved to Orlando, Lindsay was one of the very first people that was helping train me. And I learned just the respect of the business, patience, um, how serious to take it and how, you know, some people don't take it that serious or respect it enough. And, you know, having patience, being safe in the ring. Um, I, I've learned some really good technical, transitional, lucha style wrestling. Um, from Lindsay, as well as Matt, lots of technical, um, transitional stuff. 
So uh, it's been very, it's been very good. I've gotten to learn from many great people in the business. So I want to say that like my experience um, is very diverse because I've been able to learn from so many different people that I took it and involved Amber Nova. Great. Um, so since you also mentioned that your dad is a mechanic, like how you mentioned how you guys watched wrestling together. So I imagine he was very supportive when he found out that you were going to train and become a wrestler. Yes, he was. Um, when I first told him, he lit up with his big smile on his face. He was like, get out of here. No, you're not. <laughs> and then he's like, you know, cause he was watching, you know, Sasha and Bailey and these young girls with me on, on TV and, 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 and watching them come up or when they were being featured and, and, um, he's like, well, if you're going to do it, you better do it now. So I did. And I was, uh, 23 when I started training and it's been a few years now. I've wrestled for impact, um, NXT, AEW. I've wrestled in three different countries, London, South Africa, Panama before the pandemic, of course, but yes, it's been a killer ride. I imagine so. So, and then you also said that you wrestled all these different places sort of before the pandemic, like how did the pandemic sort of affect your career, you know, as it sort of affected everybody, you know, in a sense. So it sort of stopped a lot of things. So what did, how did you experience that and how did you pivot around it? Well, before the pandemic, I was traveling out of country. Um, I was hoping to go wrestle for Japan or some other countries. I was wrestling a lot out of state, which now I have been, um, you know, my bookings, everything's been picking up. Uh, the world is getting back to what we can at least call normal or try to be. I'm wrestling in Texas, Orlando, New York coming up in just the next few weeks. So um, wrestling more out of state. Don't know how out of country will be. But yeah, before the pandemic, um, I was doing well. And then uh, just like everybody, their career, I mean, everyone's life came to a hold. And what's more important is everyone's health and safety. But Yes, I couldn't travel. I couldn't wrestle. I couldn't work. Um, so what really got me through was a lot of my fans and a lot of people like you with your podcasts and um, my merchandise or my autographed photos. So all my Nova heads out there that just like got geared up with me and kept giving me that drive, that Nova drive to keep going through the pandemic. I just want to say thank you to all of you. And um, you guys give me that drive. I need that Nova drive. So that's how I got through the pandemic. And that's obviously... Um, took a slowdown just like everybody else did a couple speed bumps in the road but now uh, you know we're just gonna keep on cruising yeah the road is smoothing out just a little bit um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm really glad that you had the experience of your fans sort of you know helping you to sort of push you through and pull you through that along with um, other podcasters as well um, which is also how I found out about you through one of my friends um, who had you on his show and I was just like oh cool so oh. yeah I'm really glad that you were able to um, push through that and now here we are hopefully on what could be described as the other side of it um, yes. <laughs> yes yes so um you also mentioned um before our time together here that you are an American muscle mechanic but even though you said you know you have experience in that even though you've never really worked worked as a mechanic what exactly is that? If you could explain to the listeners, you know, exactly what an American muscle mechanic is and what's so special about it in particular. Sure. So my dad is a mechanic. He's been a mechanic his whole life from New Jersey, born and raised in, in Persephone, New Jersey. I was born in Jersey, Hackettstown, but I was raised in South Carolina. And um, my dad was always restoring classic cars. So you're 1969 SS Nova, your 69 Chevelles, um, you know, your Chevy Malibus. We're Chevy people. Um, so sorry, all the Ford people out there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the difference between American Muscle is cars in the 70s, um, they're different than cars nowadays. Nowadays, cars run off of computer systems. And not to mention, when you open the hood, it's all covered and you can't see anything, not like my car where I can pop the hood and I can check the oil and I can change it and I can do everything real quick myself. And, you know, the, the engines as well, like a, a 396 big block, for instance, my dad's restoring in his 69 SS Chevelle or my 350 in my, in my Nova. Um, these are your classic muscle car engines compared to nowadays where you drive a Honda, it's not the same engine. I'm not saying it's not good on gas. You guys, you know, new cars are much better on gas. 
but um, they're also made of lighter material. You know, these new cars are not as heavy as older cars um, where they're made of just solid steel. Like they even used to use like real pencil lead in cars. So like, for instance, if you were to get in a car accident with my car, it's like hitting a brick wall. It's like hitting a sledgehammer compared wow. to new cars. They're like soda cans and a soda can is just going to crush and a sledgehammer is just going to get a little dinged up, a little scratched on the sledgehammer and the soda can is going to crush. So new cars, older cars, they're a little different. And then so are the engines and motors when you work on them as well. So um, that's why I I know really good stuff when it comes to classic cars, um, but I have fixed new cars. I fixed a water pump in a new car. Um, let's see, my wrestling, my wrestling school a few years back, maybe four years ago, uh, they were traveling to some wrestling shows, all of us, and the ring truck broke down. First diesel truck, big diesel truck, and I fixed it. Wow. Um, yeah, so I mean, I've, I've fixed like newer cars, newer trucks. It was like a 2006 diesel truck I fixed. So I have fixed like newer motors or cars. Where I can figure things out with the battery or what's going on, a fuse blue. Um, so I know basic car maintenance, but I'm much better um, with classic cars than I am newer engines. Just like I wouldn't know how to work on a European car. So I'm an American muscle girl. See, here's the thing, like, I love looking at muscle cars like it's car <laughs> shows they're like out in public like when you're just driving around and you just see those cars just how good they look after they've been restored like I love looking yeah. at cars like that but it's just like they're re I know they're really expensive to buy because they because so much work goes into you know fixing them it so takes it's just it takes man. money mm -hmm. it does take money to to put into the car um you can find some good classic cars on you know facebook craigslist um but you might put 10 grand into the motor or the engine alone um they are fun to look at but they're even more fun to drive i'm sure they are <laughs> <laughs> like that's just really cool to listen to you you know as a woman be able to talk about cars in that way because Thank it's you. like any other like any time i'd ever heard anyone talking about cars it's like someone like um an older gentleman or mm -hmm. like my boyfriend who loves cars too like he really loves you know the dodge viper and um he really also loves i believe a i believe it's a corvette c7 i'm not i believe that's what yeah, it is. corvettes are fast and then the, the dodge charger and challengers i really liked the new challengers that came out because they kept that classic 70s body style of a muscle car but a newer version yeah, so there's only so much I know about cars, but it makes me feel happy to know that you oh. know, you know, that you know about them too. <laughs> so that's really cool. And that's what I really want to do with professional wrestling is I want to incorporate cars and women. I want to break the stigma um, with women and cars. You know, I, I can be an advanced auto parts commercial just like that guy can. I can drive my 73 Nova and walk in and go buy oil and change it. So um, these are achievements and ambitions I have outside of wrestling or in wrestling that when I get with a company um, that I can be that brand ambassador, that sponsorship girl with the cars and really incorporate breaking the stigma with women in cars, inspiring women, inspiring little girls and, um, you know, fast and furious supernova. Oh, yes, that would be really amazing. That actually <laughs> reminds me of that one time, I think it was WrestleMania 22, where John Cena um, did his entrance with that Mustang, and uh -huh. he was speeding in the road, and then all of a sudden you see him crash through the glass, and he comes out the car. I thought that was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. <laughs> so I can only imagine, like, if you get signed on somewhere, and then in pay-per-view, they'll think that, oh, it's a guy coming through with that car, and then boom, it's you. Oh, oh they're going to know it's Nova but um that I would be amazing crash, i don't really want to crash my car can we use like a different <laughs> one <laughs> yeah i don't want to crash my car i want to keep it nice oh yeah definitely but you know it's just just for the shock value just <laughs> it uh -huh. was just really cool but i understand where you're coming from though you want to keep it cool and keep it nice and cute yeah um so what exactly is so special about your um 1973 chevy nova because i've seen pictures of it and it is the cutest most beautiful car <laughs> i've ever seen and i love this orange too so i love bright colors yeah so um it's special because uh a 73 74 nova is a pretty rare year and even finding parts for that specific year of a 73 it's really hard to find car parts for it um, you didn't see too many out there. 
And then um, the reason it's orange, just like my wrestling gear is orange or I have tire marks and wrenches on my gears because Chevy, Chevy's original motor color was that hot, bright orange. So I stuck with Chevy's original motor color. The engine's orange, the car's orange, my gear's orange, my hair's orange. <laughs> so um, yeah, I like to incorporate it all together. And then I don't know, my name's Amber. So my birth, and then my birthstone is Topaz, which is like a brown orange too it's november so it's just like a favorite color just like it ended up working together you know being the daughter of mechanic we like chevys i like orange so i just i made it my whole gimmick uh with wrestling but my gimmick is my character in and out of the ring yeah so basically your character is like what the rock says it's like you turned up to like 11 yep that's just turn that volume up just turn it up yeah that's basically you know who it is but it's a very unique character you know so I think I think it's a great way to stand out thank you yeah you're welcome so if so since you have been featured on um, television shows like WWE NXT which is one of my um, personal favorites along with um, Impact and AEW what would you say are some of the coolest experiences that you've had while you've um, been featured on those shows if you can talk about it um yes uh so my first tv experiences with was with impact wrestling and i was less than two years in the business but i was trained well and i was given good opportunity and given good shots and i did well so they kept bringing me back to impact and i got to wrestle with some veteran women that i learned a lot from um you know ty valkyrie who's now frankie monet in mm -hmm. nxt rosemary sue young um, Sienna. I mean, the list goes on. I learned from Gail Kim. I mean, Impact is a really great experience for me. And then I wrestled at NXT um, versus Nikki Cross. That was my debut match. I wrestled against Io Shirai and Kairi Sane, two of the top women from Japan. And, you know, I got to work with Sarah Del Rey and Serena Deeb. And I did, I did, I learned so much from these women and it was just a whole nother level of production. It was amazing to see the production, the people for the first time. And, and then uh, just recently AEW. So, you know, I, I got to learn from so many different styles in the business, just like I talked about my trainers. It was, um, it's been great. It really was. And then my first few years in the business, I got to really just see everything quickly. Okay. So if given the opportunity, would you love to sign with either one of those companies? Yes. So what I'm doing is, um, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me uh, to go out there, do international travel, which I was doing before the pandemic, and then just keep building my brand and be everywhere as much as you can. Just go everywhere out of state. I'll, you know, try to be as many companies you can be at. And then um, eventually it'll come time to be signed. So um, I am definitely open, open to the idea of signing with a company and hopefully that would be, you know, coming soon, but I'm doing, I'm doing really good. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be wrestling in New York, Texas. I'm going out of state again. And I'll probably see me again at AEW. So, um, you know, maybe that'll come a time when I uh, finally sign and, and settle down with a company. Yeah, I actually had the opportunity to watch some of your matches and I'm really excited for you in your future because it's just, Thank you. yeah, there were a couple of moves, of course, you know, that you were doing that, of course, are also classic moves that a lot of people, you know, tend to do, but you were very clean in your approach in terms of wrestling. And I also loved um, your head scissors, um, <laughs> that move where you do the, the tune-up. Yeah, the tune-up. I love that one. The head scissors turnbuckle smash, the tune-up. Yeah. Yeah, Thank that you. was really cool. Like I enjoyed watching you wrestle. And I believe the one match I watched you in, it was against Maddie um Renowski. And Renkowski, yes. Renkowski, and that was yes. I apologize. Pro. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just apologizing just in case she watches this and then I <laughs> and, and <laughs> I butchered her wrong? last name. Yeah. <laughs> she might have to come in and give a reality check. Yes. Um, and then I also saw your um, tag team match that you had where you tagged with Queen Aminata and you guys um, faced, I believe it was Red Velvet and Big Swole. Yes. Yes. So I was really impressed with that. And I was just like, man, I want to see her again. So that was really Thank cool. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, definitely. So who has been your favorite opponent to face so far? Oh, wow. Favorite opponent. Well, I named off a lot of women like I just did in Impact. Um, it was, you know, Ty Valkyrie, um, Sienna, Sue Young, 
Rosemary, there was, you know, Nikki Cross, the two top women from Japan, Io Shirai, Kairi Sane. Um, I've gotten to wrestle some pretty great women. Um, and that's just to name a few. Uh, but um, I, I want to say that I still have a bucket list, still checking them off. But yeah, I guess to name a few would be the few that I named already. Mm -hmm. so um, Maddie, that was a great match. I have Maddie that you just, just told me about that you watched. Yeah. Okay, so do you have a dream opponent of someone you haven't faced just yet? Um, yeah, so, you know, Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, which I love Sasha's style because we're so similar in size, and I feel like we do a lot of similar technique. Um, so Sasha, Charlotte, of course, um, the queen. <laughs> yes. I know I could learn a lot from them. Um, I could, I know I could learn a lot from Bailey um a few women that I haven't wrestled yet like Tessa Blanchard I've never wrestled so there's a lot of women like even on the indies okay well that seems like a good list to sort of have and sort of start with and I'm pretty sure you know once you do get the opportunity to face them it'll still be really good so I'm looking sure. forward to what you have going on so Thank what you. would you say is your opinion of the state of women's wrestling in terms of the independent scene and sort of the mainstream scene as well um, in terms of what is good and what could be improved upon? Um, so the women's independent scene has grown immense, like just enormously, like in the last few years, especially since um, I moved uh, to Orlando in 2015, had my first match in 2016. So about five, six years now in the business. And it's evolved so much. There's so many more women than there used to be. So there's so much more opportunity. Um, I will say that I feel like there are some shows out there that could really benefit from having veteran women in the locker rooms, helping agent these women in their matches, um, being there for them, coaching them. And then I will say some of these indie shows with women that, you know, some girls, they'll throw on shows maybe too soon that might require more training for safety and um, just showmanship before throwing them on a show. Maybe they need a little bit more training. And I've noticed that with the Indies too, that I know it's just so um, oversaturated at times that they'll just throw people on shows to get some experience. But sometimes people are really hungry, young and eager, and they don't realize that sometimes it's better to have quantity over quality. So when I first started wrestling, I didn't want like 30 YouTube matches out there of me. I wanted like three really good ones instead of 30 of them that weren't that good. So I really just focused on my training and having that mindset of quantity over quality. And that's how I'd build my brand. And then eventually people would see my technique and they'd see my work that I put in and that would get you farther in the long run. So I think that would help if people um, had that mindset, mindset and they can benefit from that. Okay, so who are or who were I should I should also say, um, well, you actually mentioned that in terms of your inspiration, you sort of cited the four horsewomen, you know, sort of as an inspiration for you getting started in your wrestling career. But do you have any other ones outside of that, you know, four core group of women that you saw for inspiration? Yes, um, you know, I, I grew up watching wrestling. I grew up watching um, Victoria. Um, Lita, Trish, uh, Medusa, uh, Luna Vachon, you know, Stephanie McMahon. Like, I know she didn't wrestle that much, but still, like, these women on TV, they were really inspiring with their characters and and in and out of the ring, China. Like, um, just so growing up, um, you know, I really, I've, I really, you know, took um, a big liking to AJ Lee because of our similar size. And I was like, oh, wow, you don't have to be that big to be a wrestler. And that really inspired me as well. Um, just like, you know, me with cars, it's like, wow, there's a woman that's passionate about cars and can do things with cars. Um, that's really, you know, intriguing. So it's the same thing to see like a smaller woman be able to wrestle was very inspiring. Yeah, I imagine so. It's like you have a plethora of people you can always look to and sort of see as an inspiration in terms of your wrestling career. So it's just you know, all of those names are just so very solid, you know, in who you mentioned. So that's really good. So who are your top five wrestlers that you would say um, my, that are male, female, or non-binary? Oh, I don't know if I could put them in order, but you know, I, like I, I named a bunch of women just now, so I'll name some men. Um, okay. 
I grew up watching Eddie Guerrero, mm -hmm. uh, Goldberg, Sting. Um, oh, geez, you know, uh, I grew up watching, um, you know, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Ricky Steamboat, mm -hmm. uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> so his like two by four is like my wrench, you know, the whole I'm an American, hey, you got the two by four, I got my wrench. So I just named some women. There's some guys for you. I, I wouldn't even know where to put them in order. Um, but yeah. It's okay. Cause when people ask me that question, I can't put it in order either. And sometimes it just depends on the day. Like my <laughs> top five can change with the men and the women, depending on how I feel. All I know is just that maybe my number ones are constant, but two, three, four, and five can flip and change regardless of how I'm feeling. So, <laughs> so who's your number one? Well, for the women, my number one is Sasha Banks. Like I've said right. multiple times on this show that I feel like Sasha Banks is the greatest of all time. <laughs> like yep. just, that she's just, you just can't beat her. She has all the charisma, all of the style, you know, and all of the training. And I just respect how she continues to learn the craft, you know, even, even as she's become a star, you know, it's because some people have a tendency to sort of stay in one, you know, stay, you know, the way that they are, you know, and just stick right. with what brought them there. But she constantly learns all the time. She's a student. And that's what I love about her the most. And because I'm a student and that makes me feel happy. Um, and then my top person, I believe, for the men is The Rock, because he was just always um, my favorite um, growing up he was just he was always the one who would always make me laugh or um but as oh, a he's got charisma like no other and he can yes just talk all day talk all day yes I just love him so much so he's definitely my number one in terms of the men so that's pretty much it for me but two three four and five it, it'll change <laughs> so what do you believe the future holds for you Miss Amber Nova oh the future holds um Supernova is just shifting gears and getting started, you guys. Um, I believe the future holds me signing to a TV company that has not yet happened. Um, I believe I will incorporate classic cars and wrestling. I will be seen in some type of auto parts commercial, mark my words. And I will inspire um, you know, people to break that stigma with women in cars and really make a difference. Well, that sounds incredibly promising. And I can't wait to see you in a commercial so I can be like, oh, I know her. Because <laughs> that's how I do for a certain actors anyway. Like sometimes I watch television so hard and then I recognize faces. So if I recognize you in like an AutoZone commercial or something, like that, oh, I know her. And then that'll be cool. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> and then if I see you in wrestling too, it'll be even greater to say, oh, I know her too. So uh -huh. that would be wonderful. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amber, for coming Thank on you. the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. So if you could just take this time to tell people where they can follow you and find you on social media and stuff and tell them what you got going on, then feel free to do so now. Absolutely. So to everyone out there that's not familiar with me, my name is Amber Nova, and you can follow me on Amber Nova 73 is all my social media platform, 73, hence the 73 Nova. You can YouTube my matches at NXT, AEW, Impact, also on YouTube. If you want to get geared up with me and you want to get autographed photos, posters, T-shirts, my T-shirts are on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Amber Nova, or I'll be having my own personal shirts coming to me soon that I can autograph and then mail out to you. Um, to get geared up with me, just send me a DM to my social media. Uh, Instagram is always the best way, and you can get autographed photos, grease rags. Um, I usually have hats, T-shirts. So yeah, get geared up with me and thanks for your support. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Thank you so much.